Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about ladder networks and circuits, and we're going to talk about this in conjunction with our matrix LU factorizations. Okay, so let's first kind of describe what's going on here. So the idea is we have some sort of electric circuit, and into that electric circuit, we have some input terminals and we have some output terminals. So on the input terminals, we have some, uh, some information about both the voltage and also the current. So we know the, the input voltage and the input current. Now, something happens, right, in the circuit. That's where the magic happens. But that magic happens, and then we're going to get something, uh, some output at the end of the day. Again, so we're going to get some new output. So we can label the inputs and the outputs. We've got this input vector V1, I1, and this output vector V2, I2. So I think easy enough, right? We've got some electricity going in, uh, it hits the circuit, something happens, and we just see what comes out. That's, that's uh, the basic idea. Now, when we take these, uh, when we look at this process, okay, the idea is this transformation, what can happen is, okay, so we start with this input, we get this output. A lot of times it's going to turn out that that transformation, in fact, is linear. So we can now write that output um, as the product of some transfer matrix A multiplied by that input. So it just says we can understand the output in terms of the input by multiplying the input by that transfer matrix. Okay, so far so good. So now the idea is, let's start putting circuits in conjunction with one another. And what we're going to do, we're going to connect these circuits so that the output, so the output of one circuit becomes the input of another circuit. And when you do that, you have what's known as a ladder network. So my diagram here, we have two circuits, but you could have many, many, many more, many, in, uh, many outputs, many inputs. Things can get very complicated. And this, in fact, is what's used. It's a very important topic right now in artificial intelligence. Okay, so here we have a, a, a ladder network with one, two circuits. And notice those circuits look a little bit different. So again, the idea is I have some input, um, some input uh, voltage and current. It comes out of the circuit. I get some different input, potentially different. Um, so I've got a, a potentially uh, different output in terms of the voltage and current. But again, the idea is those become inputs for the next circuit. So again, some magic will happen. And at the end of the day, uh, we'll, we'll get some final output. And we'll just try to figure out, you know, what happened. Okay, so it turns out these two circuits that I have drawn in my diagram, this first circuit on the left is what's known as a series circuit. And the circuit on the right is what's known as a shunt circuit. So I am not a physicist, nor am I an engineer, but I know a little bit of both. And it turns out that you can use Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's laws to find the transfer matrix of a series circuit and also to find the transfer matrix of a shunt circuit. So again, I'm not a physicist. I looked these up uh, and it didn't seem uh, too bad to, to, to figure out where those transfer matrices are coming from if you're interested. Okay, so otherwise we've got some circuits and we know the transfer matrices associated with those by using some nice laws from physics. Okay, so now let's turn to our example. And these questions are important because, you know, maybe as an engineer, you are designing a circuit and you want it to have some particular output. Well, okay, you've got to design a ladder network, but maybe you're constrained, right? Maybe there's like common types of uh, circuits and chips that you need to use. So you have to work within that framework. Maybe they're cheap to mass produce, etc. Okay. So let's suppose that we have this ladder network. And notice in my ladder network, we now have three circuits. We've got three circuits. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find a transi transition matrix for the ladder network. So I want to know, you know, I start with some input. 
all this magic happens, all this magic happens, all this magic happens with those circuits, I want to know what the output is going to be. And again, uh, if we can figure out that transition matrix, that's basically going to tell us what those circuits are doing to that input. Okay, so one thing uh, we need to be careful about <clears throat> is our order when we set these up. So one thing I'm going to write, just a label. So again, notice this first circuit. Let me, let me write it. This first circuit is going to be a shunt circuit. It looks like our next circuit is going to be a series circuit. And then our last circuit, again, we have another shunt circuit. So again, we're starting with some vector. Um, we're starting with some vector, again, in this form that we had at the very beginning with V and I. So we're starting with this vector, uh, V1, I1. Eventually, we're going to get some output, I4, V4. And again, we're just trying to figure out that transition matrix. That's what we want to know, or that transfer matrix. <clears throat> okay, so let's suppose that we start with some vector. Maybe I'll call it just some vector x, right? That's our vector v1, i1. Let me label above each of these circuits. Suppose I, for my shunt, my first shunt circuit, let's suppose that that has a transfer matrix. I'm going to abbreviate it as a1. And then something will happen eventually. Uh, that information is going to run through that next series. The transfer matrix for that I'm going to label as a2. And lastly, it'll go through that last bit of uh, 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 that last circuit. And we'll say the transition matrix associated with that last shunt circuit is A3. So what's going to happen is, well, I'm going to start with this vector, right, x. And the first thing that I would do to figure out at the end of the day, the first thing that I would do is it's going to go through this first circuit. I would apply that transition matrix, that transfer matrix A1 to it. Right, so at this point, I'm now sitting at A1x, that's my new information, but that's going to be input into my next matrix, so I would next uh, apply A2 to that, and again, that information, so here's the information A2, A1x, that information is going to get pushed into that last circuit, so then we would have to multiply by A3. So again, really what I want to compute so what I'm going to compute is that matrix A3 times A2 times A1. That's what we're going to compute. Okay, so to do that, um, well, let's just go back. So it says A3, we said that corresponded to this very last circuit, which was a shunt circuit. So I need to make sure it has this form. So it says we use 1, 0. I'm going to put a 1 in the bottom right corner. It says we use negative 1, negative 1 divided by whatever that resistance is. Well, the resistance associated with that circuit we labeled as R3. Okay, and then it says that's going to get multiplied by A2. And A2, we said that corresponded to a series circuit. So now I'm going to have to use that form, that transfer matrix, for a series circuit. So that's 1, 0, 1. Notice again, I, I put in all of the easy information. It says we take negative whatever the resistance was. In this case, the resistance was R2. So do be careful about my little subscripts. Um, do be careful. Let me even erase. Uh, let me get rid of those little subscripts. Maybe that'll look a little clearer. Okay. And last one. So it says, then we have to multiply by A1. Again, we said A1 was just a shunt circuit. So we said a shunt circuit has this form. So I'm going to multiply by that. So it says we have 1, 0, 1. And again, uh, we labeled that resistance R1. So I'm going to have negative 1 over R1. Okay, so now it's just a matter of doing the, uh, the matrix multiplication. And I think the first two that I multiplied, um, so I'm going to multiply these two entries, or these two, uh, these two matrices. 
So I'm gonna leave the first one alone, one zero, negative one, uh, divided by that third resistance. And then if I multiply, okay, so it looks like we would have one times one. So one times one is just going to be equal to one. And then negative uh, R2 multiplied by negative one over R1. That to me looks like I'm gonna get positive R2 over R1. And then again, I'm just gonna multiply this first row by the second column. I'm gonna go through this a little bit faster. That's gonna be negative R2. I got the bottom left entry to be negative one over R1. And then I got this bottom right entry to be equal to a one. Okay, so that's gonna be the product of those uh, of A2 and A1. And again, I, I would now just have to do the multiplication one more time. So I'm gonna assume that you all are relatively, uh, if you're watching this video, you should be um, somewhat uh, hopefully comfortable with matrix multiplication. So you can check my arithmetic. I got one plus R2 over R1. I got negative R2 as my top right entry. I got uh, the bottom left entry was a little more complicated. That's negative one over R3 multiplied by one plus R2 over R1 minus one over R1. And then my bottom right entry was one plus R2 over R3. Okay, so let me try to make this look a little bit prettier. So that's now gonna be our transfer matrix. That's gonna be our transfer matrix for that, that circuit. Okay, so let me copy all this back down real quick, just so we can see it. And then we'll finish off the second question. So that's now the answer for part A. We've now done uh, that part. So let's finish off and we'll do this second question. And maybe we can also look at the design of our circuit here a little bit, just to see what, what uh, just to see it in a little more detail. So, okay. Okay, so now, okay. So suppose we want to, uh, so the idea is we want to design a ladder network so that eventually we get this transfer matrix. Well, the idea is we can just simply compare it to this form. So really all I'm gonna do is just set these equal to each other and solve for that second part. So we've really done the hard part. Um, we've really done the hard part here in part A. So let's see, what, so that says that 4 thirds would equal one plus R2 over R1. So if I take, if I equate the top right entries, oh, that's gonna be nice. I would have negative 12 equals negative R2. I would have that negative 1 fourth equals negative one over R3 multiplied one plus R2 over R1. Obviously I'm just equating all the entries. And then lastly, I would have three equals one plus R2 over R3. Okay, so it looks like we can take that second one, right, easily enough. That's just gonna give us that R2 equals 12. That's great, because now we can use the first one. So we'll use the first one and the second one. So that says that 4 thirds equals one plus, let's see, so we said R2 is 12 over R1. That's going to be what, 1 third? Uh, let me move that down a little bit. So, okay, so if we take this part and we solve, let's see, so we can subtract one from both sides, that would give us one third equals 12 over R1. And if we, did I do my arithmetic okay here? So, yes, okay, so R1 just simply equals 36. Sorry, I thought I had uh, made a mistake somewhere and, uh, but no, this is okay. Okay, so I've got R1, I've got R2. You could use this third equation. Um, I don't think I'm going to. I'm gonna just use this last equation. So it says three equals one plus, we said R2, where did you go? Um, R2 was equal to 12, R1 was equal to 36. So one plus R2, which is 12, divided by um, R3. And now if we solve this, what's that gonna be? Um, 
So we've got 2 equals 12 over R3. We could multiply both sides by R3, divide both sides by 2, and that would give us that R3 equals 6. So now I've got my, uh, my network, or my ladder uh, network, that I would need to... Um, need to go have produced. So it says we know that R3, we just figured out that R3 was equal to 6. We said that R1 was equal to 36. We said R1 was equal to 36. And then lastly, we said R2 was equal to 12. And now I have my ladder network designed that would give me that desired transfer matrix.